Hi, welcome along to Arsenal Fan TV. This is the aftermath. Well, uh, got to talk about the game the other night. Um, Jacqueline Hyde was back again. <laughs> uh, we got the good side of Arsenal the other night. Very good performance. Um, I thought that we controlled the game um, right from the start. I liked the tempo of Arsenal. I liked the way we closed them down. We didn't give them any space. We didn't give them any room. We didn't give them any time like what we did when they played us the first time when we just allowed them loads of time on the ball to pass it around. What we did this time is that we were on them. We were hounding them. We didn't allow them any space. And then when we got the ball now, we controlled the play and we created so many chances. And we only won 1-0, but in truth, we could probably have won that game like 4-5-0. I mean, Theo uh, wasn't on his sharpest, or we could possibly have won that game by about 4-5-0. Five, but not going to even comment about that. I just thought it was a brilliant performance by Arsenal, in particular Jack Wilshire. How good is this kid getting? I mean, Roy Hodgson, the England manager, <clears throat> must be even more infused than Arsenal fans when he's watching the performances at the moment of Jack Wilshire because he was awesome the other night. He was good against Man City as well, controlling that midfield, making great runs, passing, tackling. He had the absolute lot. Brilliant performance by uh, Jack Wilshire, and I hope he can carry that forward into the Chelsea game on Sunday. Let's get straight into the tweets. Um, lots, of, lots of tweets after the game. Um, Blake says, uh, Wilshire was world class, that is all. And I think that sums it up. Absolute world class the other night, Jack Wilshire. Uh, Guna says the team looked much more balanced last night with that set up between attack and defence and Jack was simply immense. Here, here. Um, Aaron Charles says, the Arsenal we all love to see was on show last night. Walcott is much better on the right. Samia also back to his best. And he also says, and as for Jackie boy, Heart, desire, work ethic, he was fantastic. I agree with that 100%. Um, Jamie Perrett says, people are giving Walcott a lot of criticism. Do you agree with it? Ja Jamie, I don't agree with it at all. I mean, the other night, yes, his finishing wasn't at its best. And, he, 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 you know, he, he, on another night, he could have had a hat-trick. But I, I think sometimes, I'm at the game sometimes, and I think some of the criticism that Theo Walcott gets is so unfair. It's as if, if he doesn't have a perfect game, or if the first time he misses a chance is, oh yeah, you want 90 grand and you want to play up front, but you missed a chance. But hold on a minute. Every striker, even Messi, misses chances. What, do you, do you then criticise him out every time after he misses a chance? Arsenal fans, get off Theo Walcott's back. He's probably been our best player this season. Last season... He, he, he had the most assists for the team. He was the second top scorer for the team. He is a brilliant player, and I'm glad that um, Arsene Wenger is about to uh, sign him up. Um, Wenger said uh, yesterday he's 99% sure that he's going to sign a new contract. I'm glad that that's happening. And I want Arsenal fans to start getting behind Theo Walcott because there are some fans there. For some reason, I can't understand it when I'm at games, they're just on the guy's back for no reason. If he doesn't... If he goes on a run and he loses the ball or something, they criticise him. I like players that run at players. And when you run at players, every now and again, you're going to get tackled and you lose the ball. That doesn't mean that you don't try it again. So fans, get off his back. I think the criticism is so unfair of Theo Walcott. Uh, moving on with, uh, with the um, tweets here. Um, Arsenal, uh, uh, sorry, Danny Meehan says, uh, we lack consistency, often, uh, we're often poor in the first half, but it's better in the second. Um, same with Theo, Santi, etc. They ease off too much um, and their games are too inconsistent. Again, uh, you know, uh, get off their backs. They, you know, I think these guys, uh, they, they're really trying. Um, Miguel Pinto says, a terrible first half, but strong second one. Coquelin had a good game. He was, he was a shining light in that game as well. He had a good game and shows great qualities. Theo had a terrible match. I don't know what match he was watching. I'm sorry, Miguel. I can't agree with you on that. 
Wilshire again carrying Arsenal, really excited with the bid on Cavani. We're going to come to that. And finally, they've decided to make an excellent move. Again, I cannot agree that Theo had a terrible game. Theo missed a lot of chances, but he got into good positions. And I commend his performance the other night, even though he missed the chances. Well, I'm not going to deny that. He should have put some of those chances away, but I'm just glad that he was creating chances it reminded me of the arsenal of old where we're creating and we you know he theo carried our biggest threat the other night apart from jack wilshire theo so you know i, I think it was a good performance we're going to move on now because some of the tweets here i've been talking about one of the biggest things that everybody's been talking about that edison cavani uh we've been linked with edison cavani rumors flying around twitter um saying that uh, Arsenal made a £30 million bid for Edison Cavani. They asked uh, Arsene Wenger at this press conference uh, about Edison Cavani and he didn't deny the rumours. So there was a possibility, fingers crossed, that we might be in for somebody as big as Edison Cavani and looking to spend £30 million, And I think that's amazing news. If it happens, I really hope it does. And we've had some uh, tweets come in on it. Uh, let me go to either... Either Apotoliski, he says, Cavani is the best option for us um, as a striker. A powerful forward with pace and balance, plus his shot is awesome. He's a top-class player. Um, Hasib Wally says, £30 million for a player? No way Arsenal would ever pay that sort of money. <laughs> he probably, Unfortunately, he's probably right. I'm hoping that you're wrong, Hasib, but <laughs> um, in past histories, uh, you're, you're probably right. Um, and also uh, Miguel, um, Miguel Pinto, as I was just saying, he was saying um, that if we move for Cavani, that would be excellent. Now, Edison Cavani, the, that type of calibre of player, as I've been saying in some of these aftermaths, I want a player that's going to get me excited, get me jumping off my seat. Now, if we was to make a signing like that, I would be excited. I mean, could you imagine Edison Cavani through the middle, Walker on the right, Podolski on the left, that is a strike force that would frighten teams. Then you'd have Giroud to come off the bench, or you can alternate Giroud, you could play Theo as striker sometimes. Now, that is the sort of moves that Arsenal need to be making. And I still think also we must get a defensive midfielder. Now, Arsenal Wenger saying he's going to make two signings at least. If it was, say, Cavani and, say, I don't know, a Diami uh, as a holding midfielder, I'll be very happy with that. Um, obviously, Lots of rumours and speculation flying about. It's probably going to be the usual Arsenal thing where they wait right down to the wire before they make a sign-in. However, I'm very infused to know that there is the possibility that Arsenal finally going to get the proper money out to buy these players because you're not going to get a player of Edison Cavani's calibre with £15 million. You've got to spend big. It is as simple as that. Um... Game on Sunday. I've got my ticket here. Uh, Chelsea. For all those Man City fans who were complaining last week. £59. Right? We had a game during the week as well. And then we've got a game during the week next week. So it's very, very expensive for Arsenal fans. But I can tell you one thing. We're sold out. And any away game we go to, we're sold out. And I'm telling you, Arsenal fans, best fans in the world, we support our team. So we will be there. Although I do get their point on the high ticket prices, but we will be there. And I think this is an opportunity for us to turn Chelsea over. Um, Chelsea are not performing well at home at the moment. They drew two all during the week uh, with Southampton. They uh, got beat by Swansea 2-0 at home. They got beat by Queen's Park Rangers 1-0 at home. They're not performing well at home. They're doing well away, but at home, they're under a lot of pressure. Arsenal on Sunday, let's get at them from early. Get right at their throats, just like we did the other night. Put them under pressure. The whole Rafa Benitez thing is creating such a negative vibe at Chelsea at the moment that I feel if we go there and we attack them like that, we can win that game. And if we win that game, that will really set us up. So Arsenal... Let's go for it on Sunday. And I'm really looking forward to that game. Also at Chelsea's place is always a great game. Don't forget, to, uh, if you've got comments on any of the things that I've been talking about, don't forget to leave your comments. Um, we, we read all the comments. I can guarantee you that. Every comment that is put, we read all the comments. And what we're going to endeavour to do over the next few weeks, we're going to start putting some of your comments up as well on the scroll so that people can see 
um, exactly what you're saying as well because we, we really value the comments that you're sending us. Don't forget to check out our videos. Of course, uh, we had some brilliant videos this week after the game. We caught up with um, some vloggers. We caught up with um, uh, Grant from All About Arsenal. Uh, we caught up with him after the game. He, excellent. He was giving his opinions. We spoke to Coogan Cassius, the award-winning um, uh, presenter for iFilm London, who does all the boxing and that. He's a big, massive Arsenal fan. He was giving all his comments. Bully, again, was on awesome form as usual. We caught up with Bully. And there was also another fan. I, I don't know his name, but he was brilliant. He, he, he looked for the, the fan who's uh, got the Arsene Wenger coat on. He even gave a little Arsene Wenger impression. But he was a brilliant... He just took over the interview. I asked him one question, and he was just off. And he was awesome. So make sure you check out those videos. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well. Anytime you subscribe, as soon as we get a video, it comes to you straight away. And we, we want you to... Be, you know, have access to all of our stuff. This is for the fans, by the fans here on Arsenal Fan TV. So don't forget to subscribe and like our videos as well. If you like them, it really helps us a lot. Thank you very much for uh, tuning into the Aftermath today. I'm hoping that on the next Aftermath, I'm talking about 3-0 to Arsenal against Chelsea. Let's do them. Let's do them.